What a weekend for the Hawkeyes on the hardwood. The men's team gets a big win against Nebraska and plays offensively maybe their best game of the year. On the mat, Iowa gets a win also against Nebraska and the women's team in a top 20 showdown against Indiana. Cruise to the victory. It's a weekend for the Hawks. We break it all today down on Locked On Hawkeyes. You are Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you get podcasts, and you can also find us on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. Simple as that. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on well it's been a great weekend already at least as it pertains to sports for us here in the midwest and certainly in the state of iowa a lot of digging out of the snow and uh, hope everybody's been able to stay safe got all the shovels out the snow blowers and you're able to uh, get going here still dealing with the bitterly cold temperatures but i'll tell you what it has been a great couple of days for the hawkeyes we start uh with the men's basketball team as they get the win against Nebraska. Now, this was another in a line of important victories. If Iowa had any shot at all of getting back into NCAA tournament consideration, you needed wins like this, and they went out and did just that. Race out to the early lead, 17-2. Really a little bit of everything early in the basketball game, but let Nebraska hang around. The offense went in a bit of a rut there, and all of a sudden the Cornhuskers got back into the game. Iowa stretched it out to five at the end of the half, led it 41 2-36 2:36 into the second half, and in fact, at one point, Nebraska had taken the lead for the first time, but Iowa had a response every single time and ultimately cruise into the victory. A couple of the more incredible stats from this basketball game, and shows you that once again, the power of what this team is offensively when they're knocking down shots from the outside. Now, look, this is something you can say with most any team in basketball. It doesn't matter what level you're talking about, high school, college pros, you're hitting shots from the outside, you're going to look pretty good. But we know this is also the way that Iowa basketball is built, right? With the offensive game and what they do on that end of the floor, that's going to be the difference if they're going to be a winning team or a team that is on the outside looking in when we get to Selection Sunday. But in this one, Iowa hits from the field 35 shots. Good. 35 of 67 from the floor, 52%. 15 three-pointers, 15 of 35 42%. Again, I thought this team was going to be better shooting the basketball than they were a year ago from behind the arc. It has not played out to that fashion to this point in the season, but there it is. 35 made field goals, 15 of them three. The ridiculous part, though, 30 assists in 35 made field goals. That is when I was playing their best basketball. It's not hero ball. It's not one-on-one. When a shot is there, get it up. That's something I thought I would did a lot better job with in this basketball game and getting the victory there. A lot of different flowers to give out in this one as well on the individual level. I think you got to start with Owen Freeman. He was just a monster inside. And, you know, the ability of playing him and Ben Cricky together has been something really good to see. And we talked about this a lot early in the portion of the season when Freeman was coming off the bench and he was putting up good numbers. But since he has become a starter and seeing those guys play a lot of minutes together, it does work. And Cricky knocked down a couple of three-pointers. That was huge, obviously, to be able to do that. Freeman, more of kind of your traditional post player, Cricky, with the mid-range gain and the ability to step out and hit a three-pointer. That's definitely good because both those guys can play together. They have skill sets that work okay for a couple of post players that actually can play together. That's not always the case. But the other thing is, you look at the numbers defensively when those two guys are on the floor, They've been a whole lot better. And uh, Hawkeye Analytics has talked a little bit about this season. uh, Just that, that these two guys, when they've been out there together, have been playing at a higher level and the defense as a whole has been playing. Uh, Tony Perkins, again, uh, we go from Owen Freeman to Tony Perkins. And TP has always been one of my guys, a guy that just early in his career, I thought there was a skill set that would work really well for the Iowa basketball program. And what he is doing now, taking over the point guard spot. So 
with the illness coming back off of it uh, from uh, Patrick McCaffrey back in the starting lineup. He's back after not playing in the game against Rutgers. Dix goes back to the bench and it's back to Perkins being the point guard in Sanford at the two. 15 assists in the game. I mean, just absolutely incredible what they were doing, sealing on the backside, the ability to get into the paint and then drop it off. He was just throwing it up at the rim and Owen Freeman was going up there and getting it. A thing of beauty. 15 assists in the game. And I don't care who you're taking on defensively. I mean, you put together a performance like that. That is absolutely incredible for Perkins in a night where he didn't shoot it real well from the outside. He was able to help the team out in a whole bunch of different ways. 15 assists and just two turnovers in the game for Tony Perkins and a really easy guy. The shooting, the shooting stroke, excuse me, also looks to be back for Peyton Sanford. Uh, had a little bit of a lull there, but five three-pointers in the game. He's 5 of 12 from downtown. Hunting his shot a little bit. That's what he's going to do when he gets heated up, and I'm fine with that. Absolutely fine with that. If Sanford's hitting shots, you're okay with him hunting shots because he can hit big ones and just a thing of beauty there. I mentioned Pat, Patrick McCaffrey back in the starting lineup and something that I was wondering if they were going to go that route or if they were just going to stay with the lineup that got them their first big win last Saturday against Rutgers. They went right back to the starting lineup again and they put Patrick back out there. The great thing to see, he looked really engaged and maybe looked as engaged as we've seen Patrick all season long. And we've talked about this a lot the lack of offensive rebounds, the lack of fouls. It just it felt like at times he was going through the motion. He was really engaged, and this team defensively I thought was really engaged. They knew that Nebraska shot the lights out in their last game, beating number one Purdue, and what they were able to do in that basketball game, hitting 14 of 23 pointers in that matchup back earlier in the week. And Iowa, I thought, on the defensive end was a little bit better. You know, this Iowa team is better on the defensive end of the floor this season than they were a year ago. Uh, advanced metrics right now, uh, a year ago, they were 168th in the country in defensive efficiency. They're 119th this year. Now, still not great. I mean, we're, we're not talking about a great defensive team. You kind of look here in recent history defensively, you go back to 2022 year, they were 80th that year, 75th in 2021. That was uh, when they got beat in the round of 32 by Oregon. Those teams, that's kind of what you're looking for. If Iowa can get into the top 100, you got a chance because you know the offense is going to be there. And though they've taken a small step back, and I think we've seen that this year offensively from this squad, definitely a sign of things to come. I believe that this team can be better on that end of the floor and uh, some really good stuff coming out there. So those are some of the uh, guys you definitely got to mention in the game. Speaking of Josh Dix, Coming off the bench in this one, he was outstanding, looking for his shot, knocking some ones down. Uh, really needed that out of him. He's another guy that I think you need to see more aggressiveness on the offensive end of the floor. And we talk about those top six guys. All of them uh, played 22 minutes or more. 22 from Cricky, who battled some foul trouble. 27 out of Dix. You had 32 minutes from Owen Freeman. 25 from Patrick McCaffrey. 35 from Peyton Sanford and 37 from Tony Perkins. Though they played 10 guys in this game, it was a shorter rotation, if you will. Really, Brock Harding played 11 minutes and then just a couple minutes for Dembale, Bowen, Evans, uh, Evan Bronze, and Little Sanford Price uh, didn't get off the bench in this one. Probably going to see that continue, tightening things up a little bit more as we get deeper in a big one coming up on Monday for the men's basketball team. And defensively, mention that they are getting better on that end of the floor and now we got a little excitement here i mean the run needs to continue have to win the game on monday against minnesota we'll be back with you with an instant reaction podcast talking about that after that one into your feed late monday night into tuesday morning we will have you covered there five o'clock tip off up in the barn in minneapolis an opportunity there iowa a one point favorite uh, from the numbers from ken pomeroy in that game before, of course, Purdue comes to town then a week from Saturday on the 20th. After that, it is Maryland at home, then at Michigan, at Indiana, all three of those incredibly winnable games. You look at the stretch of the next five, and of those next five games, got to be at minimum three and two, probably four and one to give yourself a path. We talked about at the end of the schedule, going to be incredibly difficult for the Hawkeyes. That wasn't all, though. Oh, we had more beating Nebraska. We did it on the wrestling mat as well. We'll talk a little bit about that. Plus, a huge matchup for the women's team. Indiana came to town, and Fox was there. Gus Johnson on the call for that one on Saturday night. We'll break things down as we continue. A fun night of hoops on the Hardwood and Carver Hawkeye Arena. We continue. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes Podcast. 
Today's episode of Locked On Hawkeyes is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL regular season is wrapped up, but the playoffs are here, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel. It's America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers, you can get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's right, 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Just put that $5 bet in there, 150 in bonus bets coming your way. The app at FanDuel, it is super easy to use and so many different ways to bet. They got same game parlays. They got in-game live same game parlays. See how that game's playing out and then fire away that way. You can find all kinds of different bets in their explore tab and make a parlay in the parlay hub. Find the best and most popular parlays that they have up at FanDuel. A whole lot more, the point spreads, the over-unders, the futures market, you name it, they probably got it at FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an easy one. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Trent kind of back with you once again on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. Your team every day. That's what we do here on the Locked On Network. We got you covered on the Hawkeyes side of things. Locked On Big Ten. You can take a look at the landscape of the league as a whole. Craig doing a great job over there. Your favorite major league team. Your favorite NFL team. NHL, you name it, we have it here on FanDuel, your team every day. That's what we do. Let's get back into the Hawkeyes here, and let's go to the wrestling mat also on Friday night as Iowa gets the dual win against Nebraska. Now, this one was pretty interesting. In fact, uh, there are some places out there that do have lines on wrestling, and uh, when you look at that, I was actually an underdog in this meet against the Cornhuskers. Circa was uh, one of the places that put dual numbers up. And Iowa was a slight underdog in this one coming into the match. And that was not the case as the third right Hawkeyes really wrestled well up and down the lineup. Um, I think he got a start was at Glazer and what he did at 197. So Glazer, of course, I, I think became more famous outside of the wrestling community and the most ardent Hawkeye fans. What happened in the soldier salute as he was re- wrestling AJ Ferrari in that matchup. And what happened afterwards and the explosiveness that happened, the explosiveness that happened there. But you also have to remember Zach Glazier, though he's ranked 16th in the latest rankings, uh, this is a guy that's still undefeated this year. Uh, he has gone to another level in this campaign. He wrestled the top uh, 11th ranked wrestler in Silas Alfred and not just won the match. He won an 11 2. And also with it, he locked up the duel for the Hawkeyes in that one. 22 10 is the final here. Uh, let's run through it quickly. Drake Ayala gets the win. Number five, Drake Ayala. Boy, it feels like he has continued just to build upon himself. A guy that came in with a lot of accolades out of Fort Dodge. He's been at a really good level. Iowa jumps out to a 3 0 lead. Then Brody Teske went down. A bit of a surprise as he was upset by Van D uh, at 133. Got to see Teske. Got to see that consistency that you've been hoping for out of Teske, another a Fort Dodge guy. Uh, at 141, Real Woods, wanted to see the major there. Again, as you're watching the meet on Friday night, as you're snowed in, and oh boy, we got some wrestling, and some basketball. I mean, it was a fun night, a Friday night. And uh, I was trying to get my son into it a little bit. Yeah, we're trying to make his way. He's a little guy. He's a little tiny guy, so... I don't think basketball or football are probably going to be part of it. So maybe wrestling, you know, maybe a guy, he'd probably be still wrestle 105 as a senior, but that aside, uh, so try to get him into it. And we're watching the Woods match and I'm just, dad, he's got a, he's got a one. Well, he did have a win, was looking for the major there, ultimately gets the win 8-2 against a really good opponent in Brock Hardy, who's ranked seventh in the country as Iowa gets back to the lead there. Rath G couldn't get anything going against Ridge Lovett. Number one ranked wrestler for Nebraska at 149 pounds. Not a huge surprise. Uh, the, the thing that Lovett's best at is on the counter. And that's why Rath G had to be really careful in that one. Tried to generate offense, but you just have, you have to be so smart when you're taking an opponent that wrestles like Lovett did and wasn't able to get anything going there. Uh, we get to Frantic. And he takes on third-ranked Peyton Robb and gets the win 5-4. Late flurry in that one. Really, really entertaining match there late. And Frantic getting the victory there. That was That's the one that you all of a sudden, you, you really felt a lot better about this duel after getting that win at 157. 
Uh, Caliendo, a nice win, 8-3, as he beat another ranked wrestler in Taylor. Uh, Caliendo, 7th, 19th ranked for Antrell Taylor, gets the win, 8-3 in that one. Great to see Patrick Kennedy back out there in a nice role. Uh, gets a 9-5 win over Bubba Wilson. We go to 184. Riggins goes down in that one. Then we mentioned Glazer and what he did at 97. And finally, you know, there was hope that we were going to see Ben Keener, right? For the first time in a Hawkeye singlet, we were going to see him out there uh, wrestling at heavyweight. With the duel locked up, though, you can understand the decision. And the decision still has not been made what they're going to do with Ben Keener. If he's going to be a guy that they're going to use this season at the varsity level, going to have him compete or use this year as a redshirt year and then still have four years of eligibility. It's a difficult call. It really is. Because I think at minimum, Ben Keener can be an All-American. He can be a guy that can go out there and get you points at the national tournament. But We've talked about this in the past. The likelihood that I was going to be able to chase down Penn State this year, I mean, the, the margin is so slim. It was slim a year ago. They had to have a ton of things go right. And even if a lot of things went right, it still not might not have been enough. This year, though, that hill is even steeper to try to climb this season. It just it doesn't feel like there's even, even a crazy path that you can put together to find a way to run down Penn State for the national championship. Bradley Hill, though, you got to give credit to the guy for the Quad Cities, what he put together there. Nash Hutchmaker, uh, they talked a ton about him. Coming off the football field for Nebraska, cut a bunch of weight. He was playing football at 330 pounds, had to get down to 285, and he was able to do that. But Hill was the better wrestler and got it done on Friday night. A lot of fun. And you know this team, again, not a national title contender. You don't feel like that, but a lot of good stories. And though there's a lot of new faces and it feels a little bit off, It'd be great to have Cassiope out there. It'd be great to have brands out there. You have that. And then earlier in the week, when the question was posed to Tom Brands, you know, is there going to be additions to the a lineup this year? We know what direction, obviously. They were looking to go there, and it was a conversation about the Ferraris and if we're going to see them uh, this season. He said at the time they don't anticipate anybody. New classes start on Tuesday. And that's when the second semester begins. And at that point, we'll likely have something official. Uh, the word is the scuttlebutt at this point in time that they're trying to get Ferrari to take an Olympic redshirt year. And then if that's the case, he would still have three years of eligibility back behind it. There's things that need to be done. Beth Getz, the interim athletic director and maybe soon to be full-time athletic director. But she's got to make this decision, too. If this is not just as simple as letting a guy go out there, letting your head coach do whatever they want to. Still have to answer to the top of the food chain, and that is Beth Getz, the athletic director, because she doesn't want to have anything that embarrasses the university, that embarrasses the athletic department, that embarrasses the wrestling room. And obviously, Tom and Terry Brands don't want that either. I mean, they're not bringing in somebody that they believe, but there's a few more hurdles that need to be passed by the Ferraris, and we'll we'll see how that plays out. But again, the likelihood is we're not going to see them part of Iowa wrestling for the rest of this season. Nice win there. Great to see. They'll bounce back now, will the Iowa wrestling team, as uh, they will go on and they will also uh, take on Minnesota. Nebraska, Minnesota for both the men's basketball team and then also uh, what happens going forward there. So really great to see a uh, fun night of wrestling on Friday night. And then you get into the basketball game afterwards. It was, what, a good four straight hours of a lot of fun in Hawkeye fandom. That's a good thing. Same thing on Saturday night. We wondered, was Indiana going to make it to Iowa City? They did, and the Hawkeyes were waiting. We'll talk about that, plus a football note when we continue here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets for your next big game, big event, game time. They're the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I used it this fall for a matchup when I went up and watched my Minnesota Twins in the playoffs. I used game time, and it was a great experience. One of my favorite things was the ability to see your seat before you buy. That's right, exactly where your seat is. You're going to find where it is with game time so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices also show your total up front. You know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Don't have to worry, oh boy, what's the actual end game going to be here? 
the upfront pricing, another great thing with Game Time. Game Time has deals right up until the start of the event, even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, all you have to do. Create an account and use redeem code locked on L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Trent kind of back with you one final time on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. So. We uh, wrap things up as the weekend wrapped up for Hawkeye Athletics, and that was a matchup on the women's hardwood back in Carver Hawkeye Arena as Indiana came to town. So going back to Thursday, the Hoosiers were going to try to maybe get out early. They couldn't get a plane that was going to get them to Iowa City. They tried a little bit there. There's a lot of questions. Why don't they just bus it and take the six-plus-hour drive from Bloomington, get a couple of buses, and get over before the storm got to eastern Iowa they decided against that route instead. They just flew in on Saturday morning and ordered the flight. All system go. They get to Iowa City and deal with the frigid temperatures when they got to Iowa City. And they were frigid themselves as Iowa got the win in this one. Just really a dominating performance from the women. Jump out to an early lead. Indiana comes roaring back. Ties the thing up as uh, they move late in the first quarter. But Iowa had an answer every single time. And here's the funny thing. You know, we go back to... That incredible run a year ago. And we talked about, all right, you made it to the national championship game. You upset undefeated South Carolina. Some people, hand raised, thought an unbeatable South Carolina team a year ago. Lisa Bluter and company, though, came up with a great game plan. And they were able to pull off the upset in that one. But then against LSU, the Tiger shot light it's out. And really, when you look back at that game, that's all it was. You had a player that didn't shoot the ball well, that shot the ball well in that game. The three-pointers draining in from all over the place. Iowa had a chance in the second half, cut it to single digits, couldn't get over the hump. There's the bad T call, a couple other things that didn't go Iowa's way, and ultimately LSU won. And the thought for a lot of people was you need more. You need to bring more talent. With more Warnock moving on and starting dental school, with Monica Sinano moving on to the WNBA, that they needed to bring in more talent. And I was one of those people. But Lisa Bluter, I thought, brought up a really good point before this season. Is there weren't a whole lot of players out there that were going to help them out. And it has to go two ways. Look, they reached out tomorrow of DePaul. She's at LSU now. They reached out to different players. They tried to get, what was it, Ware and a couple other post players. They worked in the portal, but they also knew you had to be pretty special to play for this team. There weren't a whole lot of areas that they thought that there was going to be players that could really improve this squad. You can see that. And the way that they play together, Caitlin did her thing. And though she shot the ball poorly early in the basketball game, 0 for for 6 from downtown, started to heat up in the second quarter and into the second half and what she was able to do there. Caitlin Clark was vintage. Caitlin Clark, 30 points, 10 assists, 5 rebounds, just great. She was excellent once again, even in a night where early on, she wasn't shooting the basketball incredibly well. The play in Molly Davis, though, maybe is the biggest surprise to this Iowa basketball team. I expected more inside, certainly for Madison O'Grady. I thought she was going to be the starter at the post. Instead, they're going with Stolke with Molly Davis in there. Of course, with Kate Martin, Gabby Marshall, and Stolke, as mentioned. But the play that we're seeing for Molly Davis, when she made the transfer from, what was it, Central Michigan, and she came in and was a reserve. It would give 8, 10, 12 minutes a game a season ago. And there were just times she looked overwhelmed. She's not big. She's not tall. And because of that, she looked overwhelmed. But she's figuring it out. And though she's not going to go through a growth spurt at this point, that nothing is going to change on that front, she just knows how to play the game so well. And in those times where, all right, we're going to have Caitlin work off the ball a little bit, she can go point guard. You can play her off the ball. She's an okay shooter. She can get to the rim. And even with that small size, she's so good and so crafty with the basketball. A huge surprise what we've seen out of Molly Davis. She finishes with 18 points in the game. Hannah Stolke battling inside, playing really well. They got some minutes off the bench, as mentioned, from Addison O'Grady and Sharon Goodman. I thought Goodman was excellent defensively for long stretches of the game. 
against Indiana and Mackenzie Holmes, one of the best post players in the country. It was one of those nights where Iowa had a response every single time. They ended up averaging uh, 1.23 points per possession against this Indiana defense. That's a wow. This team is better than I thought they would be at this point. The loss to Kansas State early this season, losing at home, maybe threw us off their set a little bit. Boy, this team is good. When they're connected and knocking down shots and hitting things from the outside, there's not many teams in the country that can beat them. There are going to be teams that are more athletic. There are going to be teams with better post play that have a more traditional post. But if Goodman can come in and play the kind of defense that she did against Holmes, if Addison O'Grady can give you a few, and then a Falter doing her thing, and Fearbach, I, I still want to see it all work for here. And I, I know that Kylie's missed a ton of time because of injury over the last couple of seasons. I get that. And Taylor McCabe, I think she's still going to have a big moment, knocking down maybe a big three or two for this team down the stretch. But boy, they're good. And they just find a way time in and time out to do it. Now, the biggest reason, of course, is 22. When you have her on your side, that's going to go a long, long ways. But I'll tell you, uh, really exciting. And they get another matchup against Wisconsin. Badgers not very good. That'll come up next week when they get them. But this team set up for another run. And Ohio State looms. That's the other ranked team. Just three ranked teams in the Big Ten uh, at this point in the AP Top 25. Ohio State will be the road trip coming up here. Uh, next weekend, that's what's in front of them after that matchup is mentioned against Wisconsin. You look at the schedule, though. After that one, it's not overly daunting. Wisconsin on Tuesday. Then they go to Ohio State next Sunday is when they'll play the Buckeyes. That'll be tough. After that, Nebraska at home, at Northwestern, at Maryland. Terrapins down a little bit. You get Penn State at home, at Nebraska. Could be a little difficult. Michigan, you get at home, at Indiana. That game will be on February 22nd. And if Caitlin Clark is on the same pace that she's scoring right now this season, that is a game that she will break the all-time NCAA scoring record. Whew, it's incredible. You're trying to watch this team. Uh, this might have been your opportunity here with the weather because it was still banged out. Though there were tickets to be had, people returning tickets, they weren't able to make the game. This was going to be your opportunity. Looking at the secondary market, looking at places like Game Time, uh, four tickets, good luck. Whew. That senior day, uh, they'll take on the Buckeyes in the last game of the regular season, and likely the last game for Caitlin Clark in a Hawkeye uniform, regular season game at least, in Carver Hawkeye Arena. You're going to be paying for that one. I saw, I think the get-in price was something like 300 bucks. Yeah, that's what we're looking at in that one. Fun season note, one final note for you. A uh, little football as we still await. What's going to happen at the offensive coordinator position? Uh, late on Saturday night, Ryan Grubb, Iowa native, a uh, name that we've bandied about a lot here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. He put out a tweet that basically said he's not going to be getting the head job at Washington. And you can see he was a little upset about it, which you'd understand. Now, he wanted to be the guy that took over the program after all the great things he did over the last couple of seasons there. Now, does he follow? DeBoer and make his way to Alabama. You're going to the SEC. You probably want a lot of people with ties. Does this open up a chance that Ryan Grubb and Iowa re-engage? There has been conversations between the two. There's been conversations for a long time. We pass that along to you as we always do here on Lockdown Hawkeyes. Conversations have been had between Ryan Grubb and Iowa. I believe the way that you get them here, salary has to make sense. You can't go cheap. This guy's making $2 million a year. And if that means you got to pay him two and a half, so be it. Also play Phil Parker two and a half because the money is there. You're going to be getting upwards of $75 million a year in television revenue. Pay your coordinators the going rate in college football. To play big boy football, that's the rate. Do it. Don't go cheap. And if that's what it takes, along with an understanding, if Ryan Grubb gets this thing turned around offensively, if he's the guy that can unlock Iowa and move them into 2024 and playing an advanced style of offensive football and even make them okay, get them top 70, top 60 in college football and total offense and scoring offense, that's probably enough and likely could be enough for him to be the guy that takes over 
for Kirk Ferentz whenever he hangs it up. Make those assurances. I think he's that good. I think he would be that good for this program. I believe in him, and I believe he would be a number one at the top of the list of guys that you want. We'll see. That tweet, though, Saturday night certainly opened up my eyes on what I saw there. With that, we are out of time. We will be back with you on Monday here on Locked On Hawkeyes. We have a lot to get into, a lot of football conversation. Of course, basketball with the big week. We'll preview the men's matchup against Minnesota. Can the Hawks get a win in the barn? That and a whole lot more coming up for you on Monday, followed by an instant reaction podcast after the game into your Tuesday. We'll get LaShawn coming in. He's going to join us late in the week. And uh, also, hopefully, you can run down biz and talk more Hawkeyes with him. Your team every day. That's what we do on the Locked On Hawkeyes feed and Locked On Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We'll talk to you again on Monday. Go Hawks.